Okay, patch 1.14 is here. It is a big one. Lots of content, lots of changes to go over. Um, I'm just gonna go over the card changes here. So if you're wanting to get the full patch notes and all the other information, um, including a lot, there's a lot to it. Uh, description, there's a link to it down below for you. Just click it, you can see the official patch notes. But I'm just gonna go over the card changes for you. Um, so let's get into it. So first we have a uh, pretty simple change to Lucian and Jinx. Um, basically now on their leveled up forms, the level two, uh, they can now trigger their abilities the same turn that they level up. Uh, so this is more just a change for champion consistency, kind of similar to the way that like Sejuani works. So now when you level up Lucian, um, if he sees you know an ally die that same turn after he's leveled up, he can rally. Um, it's it's pretty cool. This is I, I like this change just due to consistency. It's a confusing one, especially for people newer to the game. Um, I mean, I've screwed this up many times, you know, before I've played Lucian a lot. Um, so it just makes more sense and kind of helps people out. Um, they note that this could be a little powerful. Um, and if it is too strong, you know, they said they have no problem, you know, scaling it back or changing Lucian a bit. But just for consistency, um, you can now do the effect with Jinx and Lucian the same term you level them up. Um, and should make them a little bit better. Next, we have a change that is near and dear to my heart, and Shivana is getting a power increase, her level one going from three to four, her level two going from four to five. Uh, Shivana is a naturally aggressive champion. She's wanting to attack a lot, but a lot of times, um, like she just doesn't have the attack power to actually attack into things favorably. So now she's gonna be a little more aggressive, a little bit better stats, hopefully make her a little stronger because as much as I love her, she's not even usually what you want to be playing on curve. So hopefully this helps a bunch. Um, and also since her level ability requires her to, you know, see dragons do damage, um, this should help that a little bit more as well. Um, so I like it. Good change. Hopefully makes our girl Shivana a little bit better. All right, now we have some changes to Vladimir, a bit of a buff for him. Um, so they changed the way that his ability works. So before it was attack for each attacking ally other than Vladimir, you deal a damage to them and a damage to the enemy nexus. But now it only does that effect to allies on the right of him. Uh, same for his leveled up ability, it drains one from anyone to the right. So this lets you be able to control which of your allies get hit. So if you have people that you want to attack with, but you don't necessarily want them to take damage, you can just put them to the left of Vladimir and control his effect a little more. Um, he also now levels up with five plus allies surviving damage instead of six, so that's a buff there as well. Uh, this is a really cool change. I've been trying to play some Vladimir lately, and uh, I, I don't know how relevant this is going to be, but it could lead to some interesting, um, just different play styles where you can play different, uh, different followers with him that necessarily you don't need to take damage or don't care about taking damage. Um, so, so it's really cool. I've, I've been playing some like Soraka Vladimir and. Maybe, maybe this could lead to some interesting combat. Um, really cool change. I like this, this idea. Um, and him leveling up a little quicker could help as well. So just a straight up buff to Vladimir. We'll see if this helps him be a little more playable. Um, I'd love to see some more Vladimir actions because he's, I love Vladimir, but he's sadly just not the most powerful champion. All right, now we have uh, a bit of a nerf to everyone's favorite champion to go against, and that's Trundle. So Trundle's health is getting reduced from six to five on his level one, and from seven to six on his level two. Um, also, the Ice Pillar itself is going from eight health down to six health. Uh, regeneration heroes with big health are just hard to deal with. Um, so him having a little bit less health should help with that. And the ice pillar itself, since it's like a free card that gets generated from him, it's really hard to deal with in a lot of situations, especially if, you know, your frail yard opponent is ramping and they play Trundle on like turn two. That's an exaggeration. The ice pillar is really difficult to deal with. So dropping it from eight health down to six should help uh, pretty substantially. Uh, so we should, we'll see if this is enough to uh, reel in Trundle's power level because he's been all over the place. Um, I, I think it helps. The the health is definitely, he, he can be really hard to deal with, especially after he levels up, you know, um, seven health is a lot. So this should help. We'll see uh, what it does to the card. And I'm, I'm sure he's still completely fine, but now just a little bit less powerful. 
All right, next we have a change reworking uh, to Ezreal. Um, recently, he was nerfed to make his level up ability harder to do, uh, but now they just kind of changed his level two ability and made his level one, uh, his leveling up ability actually easier to obtain. So it's now down from 10 enemies to six enemies that you have to target um, to level him up. So you should be able to level up Ezreal considerably quicker now, but his ability works a little differently. So now um, when you cast a spell, it deals one damage to the enemy nexus instead of two. But if you're targeting an enemy um, with something like a mystic shot or static shock or something like that, it does two damage still. So this is to help prevent things like the uh, puff cap OTKs and troll chant OTK and stuff like that. Um, you can still get like the combo potential because you can still if you're shooting things with mystic shots or get excited or whatever, it's still gonna do that full two damage. Um, but they said they wanted this to be more of like a control champion with a combo finisher, which is something that I think that Ezreal should be doing anyways. You should be you know, able to play him and not just use him to end the game the turn you play him. Um, so this is really cool. I think it's a, a good change. Going to 10 enemies was a little difficult to level him up. Um, I've been trying to play more Ezreal and it's, it's difficult. So this should uh, allow you to play him earlier uh, as well and maybe play in different decks other than just like an OTK finish the game once he's flipped. I think it's pretty cool. Hopefully this uh, breathes some life into Ezreal because I love Ezreal. Um, not just because I'm a degenerate, but just because I think his champion is really cool. And finally for champion changes, we have a buff to Tarek, Tarek, however you say his name, just a power boost going from two to three on level one and three to four on level two. Support champions, he, he doesn't, you know, he needs to attack to do his ability. Um, so now he can actually probably trade a little more favorably into things. Two power was just mediocre at best. Um, so now he's, even if you just play him on his own and there's not something supporting him, you don't feel as bad uh, playing him as a champion. Um, so just a buff hopefully it helps a little bit because Tarek hasn't been seeing a whole lot of love lately um, so I like it and hopefully it's enough on to our followers and spells changes first we have a buff to Tiana crown guard she's going from a 7-7 to an 8-8 they said they want uh, Demacia to have you know some more powerful late game finishers um, so Tiana they want her to feel like an end game bomb that can actually you know do things when you summon her and rally um, so just a buff to her should make the card more powerful uh, I, I'm okay with this just because I've been playing her in the uh, the vaults of Helia dragons deck um, which now it's just a strict upgrade Next, we have a nerf to everyone's favorite ramp card, Weirding Stones, or Weirding Stones, um, going from four health down to three. Uh, this should help. You can still ramp on all the decks that you're trying to ramp in, so it doesn't change that, but they you know, can't just block aggro forever as well now. Um, so good nerf. I, I don't know how much this changes it, but hopefully it does a little bit just because ramp is a little too strong at the moment. Um, so yeah, it just uh, helps you remove them with things, you know, like, uh, get excited and you know all of the three damage removal in the game that i don't need to go over and you know things like thermo beam might be able to uh, kill it a little easier as well um so i think this is a change that probably needed to happen especially because ramp decks are so prevalent right now uh so we'll see if this is enough to kind of uh, turn down the power level of those decks a little bit Next, we have a change to the Fuzzy Caretaker. He is going from a four cost to a three cost, and also his health is going from a three to a two. They explained that the Fuzzy Caretaker was just hard to play at four. He was a little expensive for his ability. So now on three, he should be a little easier to slot into the support decks that he's wanting to be played in. Um, this could be a pretty powerful change. I, I like him on three. I agree that this is an ability that seems like a three cost card ability, um, and not necessarily on four. Um, and you're usually not playing him for his health anyway. So three mana, two health minions, perfectly fine. Uh, and his, his ability is really cool. So we'll see if this uh, allows you to play him a little more in the support archetype. I'm not really a player of support decks very often, unless it's uh, Trevor Snooze Bottom, the best support card there is. It's not true. <laughs> um, but we'll see if this gives uh, the fuzzy caretaker some needed love. Next, we have an interesting change, uh, just a strict buff to Mina Swiftfoot. She is getting an increase in power from six to seven, an increase of health from five to six, and she's getting the keyword quick attack. Um, 
she is very expensive. She's a nine mana card, and they said that kind of like with Tiana Crown Guard, they wanted these expensive end game cards to feel a little more powerful. Um, they said her effectiveness hasn't quite lined up with her costs, so adding quick attack and some additional stats should help her be a little more effective uh, at ending the game after she hits the board and not just being, you know, used as her ability and you know make it feel better where if you do have to play her on an empty board you don't feel as bad um so just more more stats more power quick attack is really good um so yeah this might make mina played a little bit more so next we have a change that i've been looking forward to and it's a change to funsmith um funsmith is getting a cost reduction from five down to four um and they're making her power go from two to one which is completely irrelevant because you're only ever playing her well Let's be honest, she never actually got played, but in decks that you're playing her, it's for her ability, not her body. Um, so hopefully at four mana, it makes her a little uh, more reasonable to play. Five was just so difficult. Um, I mean, I'd like to see a three, but that could be a little crazy. So it, it, it's a really, really cool effect. I really, really like her effect. So hopefully this lets us play her a little more. Um, we all know I'm probably gonna force it, but I like it. Uh, Funsmith needed some love. Next, we have a buff to Black Spear, and this is a card I've been complaining about quite a lot recently. Um, if you didn't know, it was originally a two cost card. Now it's a three cost card, um, and they're buffing its damage and not its cost. So now it's gonna deal four damage to a unit instead of three damage to a unit. I think this is pretty reasonable. Um, it felt bad dealing three for three mana. Um, I miss good old two mana spear, but that's okay. I don't always get what I want. Um, hopefully this helps a bit. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's a more reasonable removal option uh, when you're comparing it to something, you know, like get excited, for instance, where it's, you know, can target face where this can't. Four damage should be good. Um, gives Shadow Isle some different, you know, synergistic removal options. Um, we'll see how this works. I, it, it does make me more interested in potentially playing Black Spear because you see none of it unless you're just getting Callista's Black Spear. Um, so we'll see if this helps. Uh, I still miss. I still miss two mana black spear, but that's okay. Again, I don't always need to get what I want, but I do. Next, we have uh, a card that a lot of people have uh, wanted nerfed for a long time, uh, myself included, and that's a nerf to Riptide Rex. Uh, it's getting a power reduction from seven to six, and now it's firing six barrages instead of seven. Um, Riptide Rex is just a little overtuned. I think the ability is cool. I actually think Riptide Rex is uh, a well-designed card. I like how it works. Um, you know, it's this expensive unit that has an expensive effect, but it also is a seven power dude that just kills you the turn you play it. And the seven barrages is just a little, a little nuts. Um, I like this small tweak. I, I'm glad they didn't go overboard and like completely ruin the card, which is something that I'm not a fan of happening. So we'll see if it, you know, doing the six barrages is enough and it's, you know, reduction to six power. Um, I think this, I mean, we haven't been seeing tons and tons and tons of Riptide Rex just ruining the game right now, but it is still a fairly oppressive card. So I like this change uh, and I'm sure if it's still too much, you know, they can address it later. Um, but yeah, Riptide Rex finally getting the nerf that so many people have been uh, asking for, whining about, complaining about, um, myself included, just cause you know, you, we've all had those games where they're just play the Riptide Rex and, and you're dead. Um, so good change, we'll see if it's enough. Hopefully it is. And this last change is one I'm very excited about and it's a buff to the Eclipse Dragon, the card that I've only ever played once because its stats were garbage. It's getting a buff from five health to seven health. So now it's a seven, seven. Um, it makes it a much more reasonable card to play uh, because this effect is really, really cool. Um, and also they talk about now with a reasonable body, hopefully this could be like an end game finisher for daybreak decks as well. Uh, it's just like an option to play. So I like this, I think it's really cool. I know it's inspiring me to play more Eclipse Dragon because not that I'm obsessed with dragons or anything, but I'm kind of obsessed with dragons. So now this is one uh, that I'm a little more excited to play. I think I've played exactly one copy of Eclipse Dragon one time. So hopefully this changes it um, and Eclipse Dude gets the love that they deserve. There are a lot of other changes. Um, so I would uh, recommend you go click the link in the description. Um, check out the full patch notes because there's a lot, you know. There's This is actually one of the most like well fleshed out 
uh, patch notes articles that I've ever seen. Um, so do yourself a favor, read it, check it out. Uh, and also let me know in the comments below what you think. Do you think these nerfs and buffs are enough? What cards do you wish would have gotten nerfed? What cards do you want to see buffed? Um, is your favorite champion Yasuo? And it, if it is, you should get a new favorite champion. <laughs> um, but that's all I got for you. Just wanted to kind of do a rundown for, of everything. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed it. You know what else you would enjoy? Coming by my Twitch channel. I stream every Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, come keep me company. We get to do all the crazy things. You'll be seeing a lot more Eclipse tracking on stream. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful, um, but that's all I got for you. You're amazing. I love you. And until next time, you stay saucy. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell notification, and help me destroy the YouTube algorithm overlords by leaving a comment and liking this video. I appreciate you very much. You're amazing. And until next time, you stay saucy.